What I'd like to do now is turn to a different way of, uh, or a different part of the body, and that is the largest organ that we possess, and that is our skin. And I want to tell you about the number one most effective skin enhancing and skin healing substance of any kind on planet Earth. Now, it's a big claim. I've studied Tamanu oil for decades. I've poured through every bit of science on it. And I am utterly convinced, having given away, I mean, if I had made money on the hundreds and hundreds of samples of Tamanu oil that I've given to people, we might be having this conversation on my yacht. But, 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 I have accumulated a huge body of knowledge and evidence about this. And I will tell you right out that except for absolutely eliminating eczema and psoriasis, which it will not do, though it will relieve their discomfort in minutes, minutes, put it on, bites, burns, cuts, stings, nicks, dinks, dents, abrasions, bruises, you name it, it heals it. Zits, I went to Estee Lauder and said, this heals pimples. And they told me to get lost. <laughs> and then they called me back about a year later and they said, this stuff heals pimples. I said, really? Wow, that's so cool. What a great thing. What a great discovery you figured out from me. And they developed 11 products around it, all for acne. This stuff works. This is the big kahuna of skin healing agents. And it comes from Vanuatu South. Actually, it comes from all over. It comes from all over the Pacific Islands. And these Tamanu trees grow in coastal areas. They thrive in wet, salty sand in which most other trees would perish. So this is Vanuatu, South Pacific. You see a very, very, very stressed out environment, heavily industrial. <coughs> um, beautiful waters. It's got about 100 islands. It's in the middle of the South Pacific. It's got a population of about 275,000 people. It's pretty chill. It's also the epicenter of kava. And we don't really have time for that, but kava is part of the culture and communities of South Pacific, of Pacific Island people. Uh, that is a giant tamanu tree. It's actually hard to really get the scale of this, but about uh, 12 of us stood fingertip to fingertip around the trunk. Uh, it took that many of us to touch fingers. Um, so these, they grow in salty sand. Uh, they have beautiful green leaves. They have lovely white uh, flowers. Um, I'm sorry, that's such a crappy uh, photo. I, I wish you could see my friend and, and my, my friend and I are there, but that's, I don't know why the light is so bad on that. In any case, um, the tamanu trees have these apricot-sized fruits, and these fruits are a little bit of a rind, a rind of fruit around a great big seed, and that is called a droop. An olive, for example, is a droop. It's a big seed with some fruit around it. Acai is a droop, a big seed with some fruit around it. Uh, and it is the case that tamanu is mostly a seed with a little fruit around it. Uh, these fruits drop to the ground. They don't need to be harvested. You don't even need to touch the trees. You just pick them up off the ground. Zero environmental impact. After the rind is rotted away off of these uh, nuts, this is what they look like. The collection is done by native people. Most botanicals, people get paid by weight. It's no different with tamanu. So people in villages go out on the beach, not a bad place to work. They go out with a cotton sack. They come back with a full sack, gets weighed, they get cash. And, and for indigenous native people in native communities, they're not doing one thing. They're not like, oh, I'm an accountant, or I'm a this or that. You know, they're growing some scallions for sale, they're fishing, they're selling some fish, they're collecting tamanu nuts, maybe they're harvesting some kava, maybe they're doing a little bit of construction. People piece together a living from often dozens of different factors over time. So these are the tamanu nuts as they uh, are freshly out of the shell. They're blonde, and here's the crazy thing about them. They don't have much oil in them. You take a fresh tamanu nut and you cut it open, it's got a little tiny little bit of oil, not so much. But you let that sit and uh, dry in a dryer, and it becomes very, very, very rich with and sticky with oil. 
Um, we know a lot about the composition of the oil, and we know that it is profoundly anti-inflammatory, which accounts for some of its healing properties, but it's also antibacterial, antifungal, and antiviral. You got toenail fungus, you put tomato oil on it for a couple of days, you're not going to have toenail fungus. I've seen people with growths on their faces and other parts of their bodies just put tamanu oil on every single day and those things go away. I can't over-exaggerate the benefits of this oil. I don't know why it isn't the number one oil being used in cosmetics today. Nothing else comes close. Uh, it is a cicatrizing agent. There are types of wounds that will not heal. You get bitten by certain types of venomous creatures like centipedes, you will often get an open wound that will not close for months. You put tamanu oil on it, it causes granulation, the formation of new healthy skin cells. That causes cicatrization, the formation of new healthy skin tissue. You put tamanu oil on skin, it causes the formation of new healthy collagen, therefore keeping skin healthier and more useful, youthful and more elastic. It's great for fine wrinkles, heals acne, reduces scarring, and on and on and on. And I, by the way, I don't make any money on tamanu oil. This isn't a pitch, so I'll get rich. I mean, that would be kind of a cool side effect, but it doesn't seem really in the cards with this. But you should know about this. You should know about tamanu oil because this is the agent for the largest organ in your body. These are tamanu nuts drying in a simple solar dryer, uh, and they hang out in there for a couple of weeks, and then they get this like golden, golden brown, as you can see. And this is when they are rich with oil. Sometimes uh, women are out uh, doing this drying outside, and they'll turn the nuts, and if they find anything that has any fungus, any black spots on it, they throw those out so that the oil won't be contaminated in any way. This is the high-tech extraction of tamanu oil. Basically, just a press, just a press. You grind up these nuts a little bit, you put them in a press, and then you apply pressure. No heat, no chemicals, no nothing. And this is what it looks like. Simple, very simple. That's the extraction process, and that's the oil. 